the handling of the rising numbers of refugees reveals the moral bankruptcy of the elites of the European Union. They fail to meet uh, what's necessary um, in the face of this humanitarian crisis. Hello to everyone. We are here with Katja Kipping, member of the German Parliament and co-president of Die Linke, the left party in Germany. Katja, a very straight question to begin. Last summer, struggle between the austerity parties and Greece. Has the left, have social movements in Europe done enough during that struggle? Well, we've done a lot. Um, I personally was very active in organizing demonstration manifestations um, to support um, the European Spring to support um, the approach of Syriza. Um, I've went to countless um, talk shows in order to change the hegemony in Germany. But at the end of the day, uh, we um, have, have to admit that uh, the hegemony was still on the side of austerity, and that's a big problem. And at the end, um, we had to see that uh, the new memorandum came to life under the condition of blackmailing. And I think this hashtag, this is a coup, um, points out what, is, what had happened. From an uh, external perspective, and perhaps a critical perspective, when I look at the role of the European left, and especially European left parties over the last few years, I notice a certain tragic incapacity to articulate a real political discourse at European level, and to act, uh, especially, uh, as a real political subject on the European scene. And rather, what I see is um, confederal umbrellas in Brussels that bring together and safeguard, in fact, the national autonomy of individual national parties, but altogether also self safeguard a certain um, impotency of those parties to act as a, as a single, united, forceful, transnational political actor. Do you think there is a role uh, for parties to be played in the, in the years ahead to reimagine how politics is done at a directly European level? Well, I'm glad that we have um, a unification of several uh, left parties um, in the European left party, but I agree with you, um, our output, our influence on the hegemony um, has to be improved. This is uh, for sure. And um, so we have to act faster and we have to find a common voice. Uh, so um, yeah, this is in this point I would agree with you. What we see coming from Spain is also an interesting transformation of the way that a political party is understood. We see a great protagonism of social movements, we see a great protagonism of mun municipal uh, initiatives in the different cities in Barcelona that, that are self-empowering themselves in a certain sense to fight and win often the electoral game. And you yourself have been involved in an experience such as Blockupy and the Linke has been a party that's been very much open to that, to that experience. So how do you read the, the relation between political parties and, and social movements and how would you like to see that evolving in the, in the months and years ahead? I'm advocating the idea of mosaic linke. Um, just to explain this metaphor, it means um, um, we should understand our working and way of organizing ourselves like this picture where stones of different color um, are put together and every stone has its own character, its own rationality, but in the end everybody contributes to a common picture. And um, I'm... Uh, I'm frustrated when I see that movements complain that parties act like parties and when members of party complains movement for acting like a movement. Of course, there are different uh, rationalities, that's fine. But you have to understand, you have sometimes you have different jobs, sometimes you um, are going in the same march, um, but um, important is we to focus on the common aims. And, uh, to move on to the European level, or continue, in fact, on that level, we've seen in the last years a certain renationalization of politics, undoubtedly, but also of political discourse, also on the left. The image, for instance, of uh, uh, the European South against the European North, or so the, the poor Italians or poor Spaniards against uh, evil, austeritarian Germans. And that, that dichotomy is one that is, that is false and, and obviously cuts across all the conflicts that are present within societies and within countries. How do you think we can restart a, a, a political um, challenge where the enemy is not the other country, but in fact the enemy perhaps within? 
the country. Yeah, being a democratic socialist, I'm convinced that the border is not between nations or between regions, but um, it's still a border between um, below and above. It's, still, it's not a struggle between nations, but still a struggle between classes. So, um, and for example, my party, uh, when we were um, we having this uh, posters, um, where we said uh, the border is um, still between below and above, and it's our task to bring this uh, approach into the political debate, um, for example. <coughs> Yeah. And uh, how do you see, um, well, we're speaking today in the context of the launch of a new movement for the democratization of Europe, by, launched by Yanis Varoufakis, uh, Diem. What do you think, uh, just given the conversations that have been taking place here today, could be the role of a movement such as Diem in this discussion? Diem could be a platform for different activists, for um, artists, for critical heads in science and politics, for um, comrades of left or social democrats or green parties, and for um, activists, for example, in the refugee solidarity, solidarity movement, and they can come together. First of all, it's important to exchange our experience. And secondly, we can, um, in coming together, we could make our voice louder and maybe more people will listen to us if we come together. And um, what I hope is that maybe at the end of the day, we have some ideas of um, concrete action we can organize and prepare together. And it's um, there sh sh is supposed to be a website and a special app where people can sign in the manifesto of Diem um, and where people can write in their email address and um, where they live. And maybe there is the possibility of organizing and meeting and get togethers um, on a regional level. So um, it's, yeah, and this could be a base for concrete actions. Maybe a, a last question on uh, the most important issue of all in Germany and that's really, but also in Europe today, which is the so-called refugee crisis, which is ultimately not a crisis of the refugees, but a crisis of the border regime of the European Union and of the Schengen and Dublin system. Uh, you've been um, an observer since quite a time of the, of the situation and the status of refugees and migrations. You've written a book before the refugee crisis emerged as the one, number one topic in public debate in Germany. And the refugee crisis and the response given to it by civil society and social movements also highlights this renewed uh, protagonism that we were discussing a few minutes ago, a campaign such as that of refugee, Refugees Welcome, showing us the great vitality, in fact, of European civil society across borders to mobilize uh, and challenge uh, a certain established policies at the same time. And finally, that uh, uh, renationalization and the articulation of conflict between nations has been also put into question by the uh, work of uh, Angela Merkel in Germany, which has transformed to some extent the perception of Germany in the, uh, in the eyes of, of many also, and especially in the south of Europe, I should say. So um, I would like to have your reflection on how you read um, the refugee crisis vis-a-vis -vis the, the incapacity of the European Union to, to give a response to it, and perhaps also uh, how, how you read Germany's position in this and what should be done in the months ahead. The handling of the rising numbers of refugees reveals the moral bankruptcy of the elites of the European Union. They fail to meet uh, what's necessary um, in the face of this humanitarian crisis. And if there is um, hope for Europe in these days, it's only thanks to um, transnational networks of solidarity which are, have been emerging from below. So um, just people and um, common activists who are organizing um, solidarity um, just by their own, not um, and while the EU elites are failing, um, they are organizing and helping. So um, and I would see, oh, it's my conviction, and that's why I wrote a book about this topic, that uh, the rising numbers of refugees, they present us a bill, a bill between the so-called first world and the so-called uh, third world, and a bill between a rich and poor. So because if people flee, leave their countries, they risk their life. 
because they can, you know, lose their lives on the, um, you know, on the way to Germany, for example. So why are people willing to take this risk? It's because the situation in their countries is so threatful. And I would say, um, if we really want to abolish the reasons for people uh, flee, uh, fleeing or leaving their countries, uh, we have to change the capitalist way um, of economy. So. Um, my or a task of the left party is to politicize the debate of the refugee question and to say with the rising numbers of refugees, the question of um, criticism of capitalism is arriving here in Germany because all these people who are just uh, coming, all these refugees, they tell their histories or their stories and their stories, um, they convey a message. And this message is the following. The way we consume, the way we trade, the way we produce can't go longer this way. Katya, thank you so much for, for your time. I, I, I won't sum it up, but I think there is a lot from the refugee to the austerity uh, in, in our discussion to try and uh, construct a possible and ambitious vision, vision forwards. And hopefully today also through exercises such as DiEM, these type of debates can become a little bit more common sense uh, beyond a certain political part and, uh, and in the eyes and minds of, uh, of many and perhaps also the majority in the near future. Thank you so much, Katia. Thanks, it was a pleasure talking to you. Our pleasure.